When you say the word psychology, most people think of psychotherapists. The most famous clinical psychologist is a fellow by the name of Sigmund Freud. And in fact, we'll spend an entire lecture or unit on Sigmund Freud later this semester. There are a lot of different types of clinical psychology. You could experience therapy as a member of a group. You could participate in couples therapy or family therapy where you and your, your spouse or you and your children uh, go together to see a therapist. Um, some people end up in mental hospitals and therapy occurs there, usually individual therapy and um, group therapy. Um, psychoanalysis is the kind of therapy that Sigmund Freud developed and I've got a picture here from the TV series Mad Men of a classic psychoanalytic session. Those are typically run, those groups typically, not always, but typically run by clinical psychologists. There's another group of people that come not from a doctoral program in psychology, but from medical school, and those are called psychiatrists. So what we're going to do in this section is talk a little bit about the difference between psychiatrists and psychologists, clinical, different types of clinical psychologists. First though, I want to tell you about all the different um, types of people or uh, career types um, that include clinical psychology. So you could be a clinical psychologist, which means you help people tackle um, significant emotional disorders and significant um, psychological pain and stress. You could be a counselor, which is a little different from a clinical psychologist. Counseling psychologist focuses more on helping people develop their strengths and learning how to function better. You could be a psychologist who works in a legal setting or forensic psychologist. So there's a TV show out now called Bull um, with uh, in which a, a, a psychologist tries to predict how juries will make decisions. Forensic psychologists um, work with police analyzing crime scenes to try to understand who perpetrated a particular crime and why. There are health psychologists who focus on ways to help people make decisions and adopt lifestyles that will lead to healthier physical outcomes. Um, there's school psychologists, which are basically clinical psychologists who work inside of a school. Um, there are MFTs. In fact, CSUN has an MFT program. That's a, it's a master's degree in marriage and family therapy. So you could become an MFT, a marriage and family therapist. And this is a person who specializes in working with uh, couples and, and families. Um, you could also be a social worker. A lot of social workers practice clinical psychology. Um, and they focus more on um, helping people overcome immediate problems and stumbling blocks and to develop solutions to those stumbling blocks. Okay, I said we talk about the difference between a clinical psychologist and a psychiatrist. And I guarantee you I will ask you about this later when it comes to exams. Clinical psychologist is someone who typically has a PhD, Doctor of Philosophy, in the field of psychology. And they usually uh, study, uh, treat, assess, measure um, uh, people who are struggling. And the technique that they use is talk therapy. Um, clinical psychologists uh, build uh, empathetic relationships with their clients um, and help their clients to understand past problems and current problems and how they might um, really understand what those problems, struggles, old traumas um, have caused previously in their lives and how old traumas might be lingering now um, and limiting their clients' lives. A psychiatrist 
is someone who went to medical school. They have an MD, and after they finish with medical school, they do a res residency in psychiatry. And psychiatrists treat uh, significant mental illnesses and emotional disorders with medication. Yes, they talk to you, they do a little bit of talk therapy, but the focus of the treatment is a biological treatment. They treat with medication. Um, there's a little bit more of other techniques that we'll talk about that are non-medical, um, but psychiatrists go to medical school and they treat typically with pills. Clinical psychologists go to grad doctoral programs in psychology and they treat problems by conversation. Okay, so those are types of clinical psychologists. There are also research psychologists. For example, my background is research psychology in perception and cognitive psychology. So you could be a research psychologist who focuses on biological explanations for problems. So you might explore links between how people act and what's happening in their brain, okay? Um, you might also look at the relationships between levels of neurotransmitters and how people feel emotionally, for example. You could be a research psychologist who focuses on developmental changes, which is changes that occur over our lifespan. You might study how children learn to walk. You might study how um, attachment between a child and their caregiver early on uh, shapes the sort of adult relationships that people have. You could be a cognitive psychologist and conduct research on learning and memory or perception or judgment decision making. You could be a, a research psychologist in the field of personality. Um, and by personality, I mean those enduring traits, not how I might feel today, but um, tr personality traits that I have that define me more often than not. Or you could be a social psychologist and conduct research. And, uh, research social psychologists look at the question of how different people or being part of a group influences our individual behaviors. Within the field of research psychology, um, there are, we went through some of those different fields, but I just wanna give you a sense here that the most popular one or the most common one is developmental psychology. Um, um, biology, social psychology, personality, cognitive, these are all um, important parts of the research psychology puzzle. What career skills can you build by studying psychology? Well, if you're going into a field where you are um, going to work with other people, you need to understand how to communicate with them. Um, that involves a lot of psychological processes. So many people, for example, before they go to medical school, take classes in psychology so they talk effectively with their patients. Um, Research psychology is about experimental methods, so the ability to design experiments, collect data, analyze data, these are all important skills um, that one develops through the study of behavior. Um, maybe most importantly is, is uh, studying psychology enables you to figure out how to work well with people. Um, a common job that people in the field of psychology go into would be in human resources, trying to figure out what kind of person is going to be ideal for particular types of jobs. There are a lot of careers in psychology. I'm listen, listing just a few of them here. Um, some people go into psychology and they study the psychology of animals instead of people. And so they work with shaping animal behavior. A lot of people who go into the field of business um, study psychology. Yeah, every aspect of business is related to psychology. Trying to understand how um, people understand the products that a company might sell, figuring out how to advertise in a way that's going to catch people's attention, um, trying to figure out how to sell your product, all of that is psychology. Um, a lot of the legal system involves psychology. Police officers will tell you that a lot of their job is about um, working with people and solving problems with other people. That's psychology. 
Lots of psychologists in education, all fields of education. You can work in the government, you can work in healthcare settings, even interior design. How does the layout of a particular room shape your behavior? These are just some examples. This is the end of lecture two, and what I'm gonna do in, in mini lecture three is jump forward and we're gonna talk about specifics um, in the structure of our class this semester. So don't go away.